Bill Bloodroll, aka Mega Bloods. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a deck for the very first time. I've never played this deck at all. There are so many decks in our current format that I actually still have yet to play, and I really want to like, try to make some videos about those before Twilight Masquerade comes out and is actually officially able to be used in competitive tournaments and such. Uh, one of them being Ancient Box, which is what today's video is on. I haven't played Future Hands or Future Box. I haven't really played the uh, Dunce and Dragons with the Roaring Moon, the Baby Roaring Moon, the Big One, and the Dunsparce. I haven't tried that either. There's Arc Hand Control I haven't even tried yet. There are so many decks that I really want to give a shot. So this is going to be the first time playing Ancient Box. So let's jump right in to that deck list. Already here are at that deck list. Now, I am not really familiar in how Ancient Box really plays. I don't quite understand. I've only played against it a handful of times on the rank ladder. I played against one at Indianapolis. No one really plays it at my locals except my buddy Blake played it one time. I did a little bit of testing into it. So I know what the deck's trying to do and I have an understanding of it. But as far as like in-depth strategy goes, not a clue. And that's what I absolutely love about making these videos is... I'm going into these mostly blind, right? Sure, I kind of have an idea of what's in the deck. Sure, I have a little bit of an idea of what the deck's trying to do, but there's no practice with the deck, right? I'm just kind of going in blind and like, all right, first time trying it, let's run with it. So for the deck list here, I got four Roaring Moon, four Coridon, three Flutter Main, one Radiant Greninja, four Professor Saves Vitality, four Explorer's Guidance, one Boss, four Earthen Vessel, 4 Nest Ball, 4 Ultra Ball, 3 Poke Gear, 2 Counter Catcher, 2 Super Rod, 2 Spirit Ranger Retrieval, 3 Pal Pad, 1 Awakening Drum, 4 Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, 3 Poke Stop, 6 Dark Energy, and 2 Fighting Energy. Now, I just want to point out a couple key cards here for this deck here. Of course, we got Ancient Booster Energy Capsule being able to make it so our Ancient Pokemon has 60 more HP. So we're going to put these on things like our Roaring Moon, Coridon, and Flutter Main to kind of make them a little more beefy. And of course, for our draw engines here, we got Radiant Greninja with that concealed card, so discard an energy and draw some cards, so then we can power up our Pokemon with Professor Saito's Vitality. Choose those two of your ancient Pokemon, attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of them. If you attach any energy in this way, draw three cards. And then, of course, Explorer's Guidance as well, being able to look at the top six cards of your deck, put two into your hand, and discard the other cards. For the Vesta to be able to kind of get some energies, get some more ancient stuff in the discard pile, Awakening Drum for our Ace back of choice for another draw engine as well, draw cards for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. And then, of course, to get kind of set up with some more Pokemon, we got Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and then Pokestop to kind of roll through these, try to get a lot of these items being like Earth and Vessel, Nest Ball, Pokegears, Ultra Balls, Super Rods, Pal Pads, stuff like that. And then, of course, for our attackers we have in the deck here, we got Roaring Moon, mostly for its first attack. We don't really ever use Speed Wing. Vengeful Fletching, 70 plus. This attack does 10 more damage for each Ancient card in your discard pile. So... This card will scale the longer the game goes on, the more our things get KO'd. And since we're a single prize deck, it forces our opponent to have to take six KOs on something. So this Roaring Moon can get pretty big pretty fast. It can get pretty scary. Then, of course, we got Coridon here as well. For its first attack, Primordial Beatdown for 30 times. This attack does 30 damage for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. And then it's other attack here, Shred, which we can't even use because we don't even play Fire Energy, but some lists do tend to play one Fire Energy. So, Shred saying 130, this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects of your opponent's active Pokemon. So, really nice into things like Control or stuff like that. And then, of course, as well, we got Flutter Main here for some disruption, but its attack Hex Hurl is also really good. So, if its ability Midnight Fluttering, as long as Pokemon is in your active spot, your opponent's active Pokemon uh, have no abilities except for Midnight Fluttering. So being able to shut down things like Comfes and stuff like that is really helpful with this Flutter main. And then Hex Hurl for three energy, 90 damage, put two damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like is also really, really good. So being able to kind of take some KOs on some single prize Pokemon, put some damage counters on stuff is also really strong. So now let's jump right in to that gameplay. Already here at that Ancient Box gameplay here. At our coin flip, our opponent picking heads. So you know what that means? We get tails, and we love that. Our opponent does win the coin flip, though, however, but this works out. We want to go second pretty much all the time. We want to be able to attack as quickly as possible. We want to be able to use a supporter, like Explorer's Guidance or Status Vitality or anything like that to hopefully roll through there. Starting hand, not too bad. Got Fluttermane, Boss, Sedas, Super Odd, Earth Vessel, Nest Ball, Dark Energy. 
So not too bad here. You're going to have that Midnight Fluttering for some disruption, depending on what our opponent is playing, which can help us out. Our opponent looks like we're playing maybe some sort of like Future Box, maybe Arctina, and just kind of start with Iron Leaves or something. So we'll have to see here. So we're going to start off with Nest Ball here, just kind of looking at the hand, seeing what I need, maybe trying to figure out, okay, let me try to do a little prize checking here, see what, like maybe I'm missing any Pokemon or something. We're going to grab that Radiant Greninja to be able to conceal cards here, draw two cards, get a Super Out Pokestop, roll the Pokestop, get Pokegear, Palpad, past turn so kind of in a tough spot right now though but i got that explorers guys but i'll look at the next six cards plus draw for turn so seven to hopefully find my way into a pokemon so i got cores experiment here so maybe some lost box action with iron leaves maybe deal with like charizard or something gonna bench that manaphy here bench a rotom nest ball here for a comfy so we are playing against lost box now something that is going to be kind of funny is they're going to be able to Remove our Pokestop with Temple of Sinnoh and then not be able to uh, flower selecting here. But that Rotom is something that has been played in Lost Box before. It is something that we have seen. I can't remember who did it, but it was at a regional where they were in like second or third, maybe even fourth, and had a Rotom in their Lost Box deck. So I'm going to be able to get rid of those four cards here, get a Nest Ball. Going to be able to grab myself that Roaring Moon here. Going to have the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule as well. Got it under the Vessel here. So we're going to have quite a bit of cards. So we're going to poke a gear for that Sadist Vitality here. Going to Earthen Vessel, discarding a Sadist Vitality to get two energies here. Going to be able to attach a Dark Energy to the Roaring Moon. Going to be able to conceal cards away the Fighting Energy here to draw two more cards. So we're going to get Karaidon Ultra Ball. We're going to bench the Karaidon here. Attach the Ancient Boost Energy Capsule to the Roaring Moon. And the energy as well here. And I'm just going to pass turn. I don't really have any sort of reason to use Ultra Ball or anything um, to discard something. So we're just going to pass. Try to keep using some disruption here for that Comfey with that Midnight Fluttering from the Flutter Main. is going to make it hard so they can't flower or anything. But they're in a position where they are going to be able to Chorus here. And that's going to put them at 4 in the Lost Zone. But... That won't matter because even if you retreat into the Comfey or into the Cramorant out of that Comfey, Lost Provision still doesn't work because Midnight Fluttering says there's no abilities. So, draw for turn here. Going to have Seda's Vitality to be able, also to be able to use that. So, we're going to be able to use Seda's Vitality, put a Dark Energy to the Roaring Moon here, Fighting Energy to that Flutter Man. Going to be able to remove Temple of Sinnoh with a Pokestop here. To hopefully be able to roll that Pokestop, getting ourselves some items here. We're going to get Pal Pad though, but discarding two Ancient cards doesn't feel too bad. We're going to Earthen Vessel away, a Ultra Ball here to get a Fighting Energy, attach the Fighting Energy to the Flutter Main, Concealed cards, draw two, getting Coridon Earthen Vessel. So now I'm in a position where I could just like Ultra Ball away, Earthen Vessel and Coridon, but once again, I'm not in a position where I need to do that. Um, just kind of pass for turn, not dig through any more than I need to right now. So hopefully here soon we'll be able to attach an energy or get an energy onto that Flutter main to hopefully start taking some KOs. So got the Sadist Vitality in hand to be able to do. So we got two Super Rods. So if we end up getting too low in the deck, we'll be able to kind of fill our deck back up, which will be nice. So Earthen Vessel discarding that Karai down here for a Fighting Energy. Going to be able to attach the Fighting Energy to the Flutter main here, which I could have probably just like concealed cards or something, which would have worked out, but not too big of a deal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna boss this, pull up that Manaphy here, Hex Hurl. And then I'm gonna put the two damage counters on that Cramorant. And the reason I pick the Cramorant here is because if they are in a position where they can't KO this Flutter main, I can hopefully just pal pad, put the boss's orders back in the deck, boss up Cramorant, take a KO on that as well, and then put maybe some damage counters on like the Iron Leaves or maybe the Radiant Greninja or something, and hopefully have that going for us. So Gonna be able to attach that Gratis Energy to that Radiant Greninja, though. Moonlight Shuriken, we're gonna take a KO on that Flutter Main, also putting 90 damage to our Roaring Moon. Discarding two energy is gonna discard that Grass and Water Energy from that Radiant Greninja here. They're gonna take one prize card. We're gonna put up that Roaring Moon, of course, and the unfortunate part is we're tied for prize cards, right? So Counter Catcher is not online. Um, so we're gonna Ultra Ball away our Karaidon and Pokegi here to get us to 220 damage. Bench another Roaring Moon here. Going to roll that Pokestop. We're going to get Countercatcher Earthen Vessel here. Going to be able to play Sadist Vitality, putting 
a dark energy to the roaring moon, a fighting energy to the Karai down here. Nest Ball, grabbing ourselves another roaring moon. Just checking to see what I got left in deck here. Got Explorer's Guidance, Awakening Drum. Nothing too helpful. Also got that maybe Superior Energy Retrieval as well, because we do play two copies. So we're going to Super Run in two Fluttermain and a dark energy here. Going to Nest Ball for that Fluttermain to hopefully try to get some more disruption going on or something if we have to. Trying to shut down maybe that Instant Charge, or maybe that uh, Comfe Flower Select. But we're going to be able to Vengeful Fletching here to that Raiding Ranger for a KO, putting us at a 4-5 split. They're going to put up that Comfe here. Going to have access to Flower Selecting because the Flutter Main is not in the active here. So they're going to Flower Selecting first. Going to put one card in their hand, one into the Lost Zone here. They're trying to get to 10 probably so they can set up for that Sableye here. Going to bench a Comfe, retreat out of that Comfe into another Comfe. Get us with another flower selecting, one in the hand, one in the lost zone. And then, so now we're in a position where we still have Sadie's Vitality. We got two Pow Pads, so we can put Boss's Orders back in the deck, put Sadie's Vitality back in the deck. You know, if they end up taking multi-prize KO this turn or something, we got Counter Catchers still access as well. So they're going to be able to switch out of that company to the Cramorant, spit innocently for 200 exactly, take a KO on our Roaring Moon here. So now I'm going to put up the um other roaring moon with the energy onto it and the reason i put up the roaring moon with the energy onto it was because i was in a position where i was like okay i could put up karai down and take a ko with that but if i can dig my way into boss i could potentially just take a ko on like that roaring moon ex or maybe the rotom or something and be in a pretty good position so we're going to attach the energy to that roaring here roaring moon here and Unfortunately, I won't be able to find that boss, but we're going to just do a little more setting up here. So I'm going to put a Dark Energy to the Roaring Moon, a Dark Energy to that Flutter Main, and then draw three cards. We're going to draw into our two Superior Energy Retrievals. So now we're in a pretty okay spot. Bench another Roaring Moon here, because that one's definitely going to get KO'd on the following turn, probably. We're going to have access to Pal Pads and Super Rods. Um, we do have two cards in deck, so we make sure we don't deck ourselves. So I'm going to Pal Pad back in Boss's Orders and Professor Seda's Vitality here. And now I'm going to be able to roll poke a stop if I want to. But it's going to put me one card in deck, and I don't know if I want to do that. So I am going to Spirit Energy Retrieval, discarding Countercatcher Pokestop to be able to conceal cards and hopefully be able to find maybe that boss. But I'm going to like to not do that um, and just kind of hold on to it. I don't mind them taking the KO on this Roaring Moon. It's going to keep them on odd prize cards still. You know, they're going to be on odd prize cards the whole game. It's going to put me in a position where my Roaring Moons are going to do more damage. I could get set up with the Flutter Main again. And I don't have to worry about decking myself because if I do use, if I use a Concealed card, I'm going to draw two. Put me into two in deck. I'll have one card left in deck. And then I have to four, I have to use that Super Rod guaranteed that turn to be able to do that. And I did want to get my deck too thin and then have to Super Rod them back in and just getting worried about maybe stalled out or something. So, they're going to bench that Sableye there. Going to be able to Mirage Gate a Dark Energy the Roaring Moon. Psychic Energy that Sableye. Going to be able to use Sableye's Lost Mine Attack here to hopefully spread some damage. Maybe taking a KO on that Flutter Main and maybe just kind of going that route. They're in a position where they could really spread some nice damage to all of our Roaring Moons and stuff though. But they're going to like to take the KO on that Flutter Main here. And then just kind of put the rest of the damage counters on our active Roaring Moon. Some on that. And then... Being able to take a prize card, putting us at a 3-3 split here. But once again, I got access to that boss's order. So I could play Awakening Drum here um, and be able to just draw the rest of my deck. But once again, uh, I'm not really in a position where I need to do that. So I'm going to Concealed Cards, discarding the Fighting Energy, draw two here. going to be able to find that boss's orders to be able to pull up that Roaring Moon EX. I'm going to be able to Super Rod some cards back into the deck and Pal Pad so I don't end up decking myself here. So... Pow pad boss's orders and Sadie's vitality back in. Our opponent knows what it is. I'm gonna be able to pow pad that boss back in, be able to boss up something else again, like that Verizian or that Rotom to take another two prizes and win the game. So our opponent knows that we had that game in lockdown there. Also, absolutely love when the TCG Live client has a huge bug and we don't get to see any of the uh, the cards here, and it kind of just skips to that, and you don't get to see anything there. But absolutely incredible. So let's jump right in. To that outro. Oh, everybody, right, that's gonna do it for today's video. Absolutely incredible being able to pick up the win there, playing Ancient Box for the very first time. And I'll make sure to put the deck list I played in today's video in the description below. So you guys want to try it out for yourself, you'll be able to. If you guys enjoyed the content I've been making so far in the channel, don't forget to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.